Question. Dire team pick. Hello and welcome to a game of Dota 2. You are here, of course, with Star Ladder Star Series. It is still season 8. We are actually at day 14 and I just, uh, well, I just realized, I realized a couple of days ago that we are nicely following the dates of December because it's the 14th of December and it's day 14. Now, of course, during Christmas that will change because there will be a break during Christmas and at New Year's as well. But uh, nonetheless, that is actually quite funny. And uh, yeah, 24th, 25th and 26th, there's no star ladder. So that's when things will be messed up again. But until then, we're nicely following the days of December. So day 14, we have got three games today. This is game one of three. Dying and we have NextKZ taking on Lost Lake Gaming. And just to take a quick look at their scores, NextKZ. Yesterday, they lost their first match uh, against Mouse Sports. Uh, still on top, nonetheless. Still above Alliance. Uh, though they still have to face those, as that was a game that was postponed yesterday due to server issues. And, uh, of course, on the other side, it is Osley Gaming that have played seven games in total, three, one, four lost. Among those three wins, however, is a win against Alliance. So they have had one of their top, tougher opponents already. Looking to, of course, take out next KZ here. Team we'll see if next KZ will allow them. So far, we've got some bans, of course. It is a Bristleback and a Viper, as well as a Visage and a Timber Saw. So just strong heroes that people don't want to face but surprisingly enough not heroes that normally I am at least expecting like an Elder Titan like Pugna an Alchemist all three of course picked up no surprise there it was an Alchemist picked up by Next KZ we've got an Elder Titan and a Pugna for Oslo Gaming and then a Clockwork went the way of Next KZ and overall I'm expecting Oslo Gaming to use an Elder Titan as a offlaner so that's Clockwork and Elder Titan both secured for the offlane as Radiant Huskar. Oh, I forgot, I forgot, I forgot. Huskar banned out. Slark and Huskar, of course, uh, back into captain's mode. I shouldn't I shouldn't have uh, been so surprised about that since we already saw... Um, we already saw Slark a couple of times actually three. earlier today in the G League and yesterday in Star Ladder as well. But uh, no Huskar yet, or at least I haven't seen him yet. But we won't see him either because he's just banned out. Curious to see if we will, be, will we, if we will see a Slark right now. Today, that is. Or maybe still in this game, because he's still in the pool. But at least we won't see a Huskar. I wasn't expecting Huskar to be a very strong hero here in, um, in, in Captain's Mode, that he was actually going to be one that people would want to play or want to ban. But apparently I was wrong. It was a very, very big snowball hero though, I guess. Well, with the Pugna there, I'm kind of expecting Pugna to be going into the mid lane. We've also seen Osla Gaming running that Pugna in a farming role though. Or on an aggressive trial lane or on a safe trial lane. I believe they have done it both. Of, uh, both. So we'll see which one they, they end up going for to do uh, uh, doing, but uh, which one... Wow, English is hard apparently. Which one they're going to do for the Pugna. Pugna... I'm gonna assume so far mid. For next KZ, they also have a hero in the pool in their in their lineup so far that we have seen in so many different roles. And I mean, Clockwork is also one of those heroes. But for now, I'm gonna assume he's on the off lane. But Alchemist, he can go safe lane. He can go mid. He can go support. There are so, there are so many options with that guy, and that's one of the strengths of this hero that you can pick it up at, as number one pick every single time, and nobody will know what your lineup is gonna be about. Is it going to be about farming? Are you going to be aggressive with an alchemist? Are you going to be pulling him solo mid? It's all possible. Dire it's all possible. Band. Life Sealer is the band that also like gaming goes for. Now one hero that is still on the pool that I wouldn't be surprised seeing banned in a couple of two bands that we're seeing or if maybe he even picked up. An OD. We still have the OD in the pool. <clears throat> now I Ten do believe it's more likely up on next KZ than it is up on also like gaming considering I already mentioned that also like gaming Five is probably going to put that Pugna mid. OD is a fairly decent hero against Pugna on the lane, Reserve but the time. moment that fights happen, if Pugna's ward is up, you're not going to have an easy time of, as OD, especially not if that uh, if you cannot kill that ward fast enough because your orb attacks will cause you pain. And OD is actually a fairly mana intensive Radiant hero. I mean, he might be restoring his mana every single time, but it hurts every time you use mana, restoring it or not. 
We got the ban as the uh, last ban here in the second banning phase for next KZ. Not a strong Ten hero. Maybe a hero that they were expecting to see t in combination with the Weaver. Weaver still in the fly. I really don't like pick. seeing Weaver lately though, so I'm hoping that's not going to be the case. And a storm banned out for Oslik, so that kind of indicates that they are expecting Alchemist to be at least a support or carry, not really in the mid lane. But Oslik Gaming has got the first pick, and with that they might be revealing a bit more, because also two heroes that we normally see picked up very early on. What's that sound? Ten seconds remaining. I have never heard that sound before. Anyways. Um... And it, well, yeah, what I'm talking about is, of course, the Crystal Maiden Reserve and the Venomance. Both still in the pool. Both strong supports would fit in either lineup. Any lineup, to be honest. I like Crystal Maiden mostly with the Elder Titan. Dire team purely because of her aura and Elder Titan's uh, ability to spam out his spirit a bit more. I mean, if, especially if he's on the offlane. Getting his soul ring might not be the fastest Radiant thing on the offlane. And if you have a Crystal Maiden aura, it, it gets... You know, it gets easier to make it through the time until you have your soul ring. If you are indeed gonna go for a soul ring, because that's kind of mandatory. If he, or mandatory, it's it's kind of expected. Nyx and Lich go the way of Oslik, like, though. Pick. I mean, Lich is not your typical aggressive tri lane hero. It might be even that we're gonna see two dual lanes coming out of Oslik like, Gaming. Elder Titan and Lich can be off lane very easily. With Lich just constantly the nine creeps, making sure that the lane will push back, will be pushed back towards their tower. Nyx assassin. We've actually seen him lately a couple or a couple or more than normal at least actually lately mid solo mid. Ten and that would fit remaining. with Oslik Gaming's tendency to sometimes use that partner on the safe lane. Five seconds remaining. I'm gonna assume that he's gonna be a support though, and with that, I mean, if he's there is gonna time. be a Lich uh, with the Elder Titan, the Nyx Assassin with uh, with the carry, then we're looking at a ranged carry. Gyrocopter and Luna both still in the pool, both really really decent as well. Especially Gyrocopter in this ordeal, you want to have some extra team fight if you ha already have got the Elder Titan Earth Splitter. Yeah, that Gyrocopter would do really well in those late gaming's lineup. And also, of course, secure them some late game. They've got some early game with the pressure they can apply with the Pugna. Nyx Assassin, perhaps, if they can g give him some fast levels, then he can also be quite a menace in that uh, early game. And for next KZ, their Crystal Maiden is still there. Venomans are ignored up until now. As both teams actually use a lot of their bonus time. We only have 15 seconds left for Oslik, and right now next KZ is already past that point even, so... Well, we'll see what they go for. I mean, Ten they don't necessarily remaining. need a support, because as said, Alchemist can do the same thing. Hell, we've even seen Clockwork Five do uh, the support remaining. role here. Now they end up going for the Doom. Radiant team ban. Strong hero against the Pugna. Makes him kind of useless. Elder Titan, same story. Lich and Nyx Assassin, not so much, or at least it's nice and all that, but, you know, assuming that they're just gonna be support. Ten seconds remaining. And one more ban needed for Oslik. Let's see how much time they're gonna give themselves for the last pick later on. Ah, still 10 to 11 seconds left. OD still banned out. They Dire still don't want to face that OD with the with the Pugna. I don't blame them. I, as I said, I mean he'd win it on the lane. It's just later on that it's going to be really tricky. But if they if they feel like they have not got that much, like if if everything relies like on the Pugna mid game, 10 seconds remaining. Then getting the OD removed, allowing Five Pugna to have a better remaining. mid game, mid lane, both. Would, uh, would be nice. Weaver is the last one to get banned out by an XKZ, team. so we'll see what Oslik decides to go for. Is it If it is going to be a Gyrocopter or something like that? Gyrocopter Luna? Or if it's going to be something entirely different? I would really like Ten to see some more team fight remaining. though. I mean, they got so much, and one thing that they could really use is Five the initial slow from the cooldown. I mean, if you have your Lich Ultimate, bounce, uh, Lich Ultimate bouncing around, then you don't Ten want- like, you already remaining. are slowing some people. And they go for the Shadow Fiend, so it looks like we Dying are gonna see a Pugna on the safe lane, and the Shadow Fiend mid. Shadow Fiend safe lane could be, of course, happening as well. I mean, we've seen that before. 
Kinda might be more rewarding now for next KZ to try an aggressive tri lane though. They don't really have two strong heroes for aggressive tri lanes, but we'll see. Looks like we're gonna have an alchemist as a support. What the fuck? I will play the bet then in the mid lane. And that will mean we're seeing a doom on the uh, on the safe lane, and that means a yeah, doom on the safe lane is a very good hero to just solo it up. Doesn't need anybody else there. Alchemist and Crystal Main can rotate, can roam, can go bottom for sure. And if you if you have yourself a um, an aggressive tri lane against the lane with the lich, lich is not going to be doing all too well. <laughs> Amazing, got the ix mic stash, nice. But it's um but yeah, if you have a lich there on the uh, on the safe lane with your tri lane, you're gonna deny creeps, obviously, your own creeps. And that's gonna allow your enemy team to push a bit more and to dive earlier on if they if they want to, especially if there's an acid spray there, scorched earth, they can just push you down, which is you know kinda interesting considering the pushing lineup is Gonna be the go in the way of Oslik Gaming if you have to pick one. But purely because of that Pugna, OZ should be pushing harder. So you have a pause coming out straight away. No real hot skins. Get yourself some decent hot skins, people. Let's take a look at who's playing what. As we do have, of course, OSG playing from the right hand side. We've got Weejo Zik playing the Lich. Wicked Sick playing the uh, Nyx Assassin. Tron playing the Elder Titan. Chomi will take on the Shadow Fiend. And then Big Nam will play the Pugna. Big Num normally the one to be uh, on the safe lane. They actually switched at some point, so I'm kind of confused right now, but can't really tell where they're gonna go from their inventory because they haven't picked anything up yet. Taking a look at next KZ, we've got ourselves What a Fucka playing the Bed Rider, Mantis will play the Doom, Amazing, on the Crystal Main, Reeves playing the Alchemist, and Equal, last but not least, it is the support, uh, the word story, the clockwork, offlane clockwork. But support Alchemist, support Crystal Main, I really like this. You've got yourself a slow, a stun, a d normal dis- or another disable that is really instant with the frostbite there, of course, and the acid spray for the minus armor. It is the recipe for a successful gank. No matter where you're gonna gank. Because if you look at mid, if it's Pugna or, or Shadow Demon, either way, these heroes don't have an escape, and Decrepify might be sometimes considered as an escape depending on who you're up against but if you're going to be up against a support duo of a crystal main and an alchemist you're not going to be able to get away not even with your decrepify hell it's going to kill you off faster two minutes it was also like gaming needed when they uh, when they passed apparently But yeah, these are very gankable supports, uh, gankable mids rather. And coming to that, I mean, if you want to gank mid, an aggressive tri lane is not the easiest way to do that from. I mean, an aggressive tri lane, it's so incredibly obvious when those supports are missing from an aggressive tri lane. So perhaps we're going to see next KC just do a, um, do a safe tri lane, so that would allow Amazing and Reeves to rotate a lot more than they otherwise would. Wow, look at this one. Liquid IX my games watched. Oh, that was probably in it already. Crystal Nova's cast. He's, he's never revealed heroes with dust, nor has he placed any words. Well, I think, oh my god, he's gonna get a number one and a number two if he's able to place those words. Let, me see, let us see it. Place that ward. In the meantime, the rest of OG is coming into the jungle. They've already placed their ward. We have to show it again. This was actually seen, by the way, by the looks of it, or the pings come out. What? It doesn't register? 30 seconds to battle. Well, that's disappointing. The other word he gave to, uh, he gave to the clockwork. Well, okay. Fair enough. Stupid. Stupid. We are gonna see a safe, safe trial and then coming off from these two, but I'm... I'm expecting them, like, they both have a smoke in their inventory. They're gonna be very aggressive. The mid lane is not gonna have a fun time for sure. So, save try lane for next KZ. The mid lane, of course, but what the fuck on the Bat Rider and then the off lane. Equal. None. No, no surprises there. Regeneration. 
And Strong will be on the offline. He will be supported by the Lich, so he is going to uh, deny it with Creeper ready and trying to block right now. So, yeah, this is a dual lane as expected. Chomi will still take the mid lane as a Shadow Fiend. And indeed, then Pugna playing on the safe lane, as, uh, as mentioned earlier. But they sometimes switch roles, so, you know, you never know for certain. But luckily for now, I guessed right. Cool Nick set as well. Everybody's got cool sets here. Now, if you ask me where the first kill is going to happen, I would say the kill is going to happen wherever the Alchemist and Crystal Maiden decide to gank Crystal Maiden. So far, she's of course pulling and uh, killing the jungles. She can do that with her Frostbite. Once she's level 2, or maybe even level 3, then we'll see them rotate. Then we're going to have also the Alchemist coming around to... Uh, maybe maybe they want to have the Alchemist at level 2 as well. Just have and an SS spray and an unstable concoction, but... Yeah, we'll see. Um, we'll see who they're gonna kill first. But if someone dies before that, that would be just a mistake. What a fuck! I is uh, unrelentless with his uh, sicky napalms, by the way. But of course, Shadow Fiend. I mean, he knew he was gonna go up against the Bat Rider, so he is getting sick charges plenty. He just has to be careful for his turn rate. But Shadow Fiend, overall, a hero that is very decent with his turn rate. So. He doesn't really like. He doesn't really suffer as much as a, as a Queen of Pain or a Puck would because, well, they have worse turn rates. Still suffers nonetheless, but it yeah, could be worse. Could be worse for sure. And I'm expecting him to not die. He should not die. Neither of these two should die here in the middle lane. Maybe until level six, if what the fuck can get something off, or until someone makes a mistake. If Chomi gets continuously hit by sticky napalms and he gets like zillion stacks, then yes, what the fuck I could try and kill him. But in return, if he overextends just by a little bit, he might just be able to uh, to die from that. So he has to be careful there too. Reeves trying to stack the c or pull the camp doesn't really get any more than one creep though, and Tron will be in range of the experience should someone die, so he'll be fine. And the lane will not be uh, pulled back. Meantime, Lich gets himself an illusion rune just before Amazing gets there. Amazing. He has got a full mana bar again, even though his mana potion got dropped off. He's level 2. I'm really hoping for them to rotate fairly fast, though. It really depends on on the levels and, and how aggressive they think they can be. And Lich actually looking uh, to help out middle a bit. I mean, what a fuck. If they can hold him down, that means no... Lasso. No blink dagger. At least not fast enough. And of course the reason that I'm saying lasso is because... Well, first of all, that's his level 6 ability. Duh. But also because he is kind of the only one that can really carry the middle game. Mid game for this. For next KZ's team. Doom can do it if he has enough farm. If he's doing enough. But if you're going to assume that he's going to be up against the Lich all the time. Wait a second. That first rotation. The first smoke. It's here, they go for Tron, they will get out the Frostbite, then the Sun, the SS spray comes out, and the First Blood goes the way of Mantis. Now that is something they can do every single time that Tron is on that side of the river. As long as they have mana, but I'm thinking Amazing is going to make sure of that, because he did pick up the mana aura at level 1. So, yeah, that is going to be a combination that is very strong. What the fuck, however, as I just pointed out, he is going to be the one to carry this mid game, because Doom normally wants more farm. He has. He normally gets a lot of farm. Don't get me wrong. He's gonna get farm with the Vower. He could even get himself the uh, the Midas still, even though it's a bit more expensive. I don't think it matters that much if you're a Doom and you want that extra bit of farm. Instant, uh, instant other smoke, by the way. Reeves and and, and also amazing. They just have to wait for Tomi or we just Zik to come a bit further. Maybe what the fuck is gonna try to bait it out. They're already charging up the stun, they're gonna go for it. They looked for the vision, the stun. It will still come out with the vision, they need the vision, they can't get it. Reeves stuns himself, might actually drop. Rage is coming out, Chomi gets the kill, flares are gonna happen. What the fuck, uh, what's he gonna do? What are you doing? You're dead, that's gonna be a double kill for Chomi and no return kill. Well, that was too trigger happy, they should have not went in. Maybe equal can make a difference though, maybe he can get what we just did. In comes Wicked Sick though, and he's gonna make sure that there's gonna be a third kill on the board here in this middle lane. No retaliation kill done. Or maybe you can say that only retaliation kills were done, but none of the initial gank targets went down. That's not good for for Next KZ, in case anybody was um, unclear on that one. But Next KZ, with that failed gank, 
they have to go back to the drawing board. They needed that to work, and they you never can ever let a shadow fiend get far ahead because they're like there's just no stopping him, and they know this. And right now, Bad Rider is not the one to pull it straight. Maybe he wants to get his Blink Dagger, but for that to happen, he needs some help from his need those, jung those jungle creeps to be stacked up so he can take them down later on. So he can get a lot of farm in one go and get himself the Blink Dagger to pull pull the balance even again. For now, though, Chomi, I mean, he is just too farm to be dealt with by having a mediocre gank. He's 26 for 9, what a fuck, only sitting on 11 for 3. He has been left alone slightly, as Chomi was in the jungle for a while there, but of course uh, the Lich was still around there, so doesn't really hurt that much for OSG. Actually gets, gives Lich a bit, uh, a bit of extra level, so why not? In the meantime, on the bottom lane, equal. We already saw him rotating around mid at kind of means that he wasn't really doing that much on the bottom lane, and that's that's correct because he is only sitting on 16 last hits, and while it's not bad, because he's even better than his own solo mid, if you compare it to the Pugna, who is 38 for 9, it is not even mediocre. So, yeah, and Pugna, 38 for 9, is even higher than the Doom, who's sitting on 35 to 9, which are actually the two that you can compare. Doom, however, is getting that extra farm with his Devour, and that's something that, of course, the Pugna cannot get. Pugna was going to try for a fast mechanism. His equals, keeping his haste rune safe. Is he going to aim to do something with that, or is he going to aim to give it away? Maybe they want to try and go for someone. It really depends. He is having a lot of patience for this one. Now he picks it up. And actually looking at going mid, but I mean, just standing still on the Radiant Ward. So this is the most obvious thing. If he was going to go for a gank, well, then it failed. <clears throat> That's all I can say about that one. In the meantime, show me. I mean, right now, OSG, they're not in any rush to make anything happen just yet. They still need their core items, they still need their core levels. And it's all up to NextKZ to try and, and get something going here. Be that Blink Dagger on the Batrider. Be that giving Reeves extra farm so he can maybe transition into more than just the support. He is going to be the one to make things happen as well. This Sentry Ward, they, all they do... Let's walk up the high ground to get themselves a, a ward, but no. Drums now for the Doom. It is an item that you would expect him to see uh, aggressive with early. I mean, he went for Doom and, and face boots. Uh, do, or sorry, drums and face boots. No Midas. His drums and face boots shouts early aggressions. Means that he knows that his team needs him sooner rather than later. And with that Doom, he can actually do that. If he gets a bit of harassment up on Tron, he might actually be able to kill him if the lane was for pushed further out. Because you do need to change your target slightly. But it all depends on how much aggression you can do before you hit that Doom on. And of course, how close you think the enemy supports are if they, in case they are going to try to deny that target. Oh, that's going to be Batrider rotating. He has got his last, so he's looking for a kill on the Pug now. Let's see if he can make it happen. He's not alone. Supported by the Clockwork. Clockwork, who is level 6, he has got his hookshot. If you want to grab someone and you don't have a blink dagger, oh, the hookshot missed. Oh, well. I was uh, I was going to make a case for, uh, you know, having the hookshot will at least allow you to initiate and uh, take the target then out of the cogs and drag him with you. But if the hookshot misses, yeah, that's not going to work out. What the fuck, I still hanging around. His smoke already ticked off, though, and Wicked Sick might just be in some trouble. Can Clockwork actually get him? He's trying to come from the side, Spike Carapace. He comes at a crap fight, the cocks to win, but it is equal that takes a lot of damage here. He will not dead. What a fuck, he's gonna be next. It's a double kill, two dead, one for the Elder Titan, one for the Pugnant. It's the first Radiant's rotation of Tron. Is under attack. And the rotation of next KZ is just not. not good. And I, I showed you the scores at the start of the game, like during the draft. I showed you what these teams have done so far. Next KZ. They haven't Radiant lost any games until yesterday. Attack. They do not seem in shape at all. Their rotations Dyer's fail. Their map fortified. control is not what it seems to have been. I mean, going for a gank like that when Dyer's there are a couple of heroes missing from the map. Attack. When your hook initial hookshot failed so they know that you want to initiate. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. That's, that's just questionable. 
And that was the first tower as well. I mean, no surprise there. OG, they could just march on. There was nobody of NexKZ that was going to stop them. Push the gold graph uh, quite a lot in favor of OSG. It was already four kills ahead. In the meantime, Doom farming. Surprise. Alchemist trying to get some farm going. And needed too. He doesn't have his level 6 yet. Neither does Crystal Maiden actually. She's still jungling. And even though a jungling Crystal Maiden is not bad. It is still... After a couple of levels, it's, it's just going too slow. I mean, she's getting something, and she's not sharing it with anybody, so she's not taking experience away from someone else. One could argue that perhaps there she's taking experience from the uh, from the bear rider, but still. It's, uh, it's interesting to see that she's still doing that. But then again, her smoke ganks failed, so you can't blame her. You can't blame her whatsoever. Chomi, level 10 in the meantime, almost has his BKB. Looking very healthy here with Treads. 2-0-1. He's only not been involved in those two kills that would just happen on the bottom lane. In the meantime, the Elder Titan. I mean, Elder Titan is probably the one that is not doing as well as, as you might think, considering the way that this game is going. But that's all because of Doom making sure that he is still doing okay. But this Elder Titan, he is level 8. He might not be having a lot of last hits or a lot of kills. He has got one kill, of course, but... And he is the one death that uh, that they have. But he has got a lot of levels. And in this case, his levels are the most important thing. Level 4 of Natural Order is the most important thing here. I mean, he's not putting the offlane to get a lot of farm. He's putting the offlane because he can get some farm and he gets solo levels. Reeves, level 6, starting to build to his medallion, which is good because with that perhaps they can have uh, a bit of an edge again to the game. If they can take down Roshan, then they would be able to maybe pick it up a little bit again. And uh, same thing, if they get a blink dagger on that bad rider, they could start with a bit more aggression. To do that though, they do need a bit of uh, different wards. They've got some wards up, of course. A very defensive ward in the mid lane, in a Roche pit. The spirit scouts out where what the fuck is haste rune taken by Chomi. And that's of course the other ward scouting out the bottom rune that wasn't there, which made them know that they were top equal. I don't think you're gonna live through this. Not nope. One more hit or a raise. A raise will do the job just as well, Chomi. No need to prove me wrong just because I said something that you didn't do. But yeah, Chomi with the haste rune. Good luck stopping that one. He's level 11. Take a look at the levels. The only one that comes close from next KZ is the level 10 Doom. Dyer's and behind that is like level been. 8, which is the same level as the support Lich. OSG is doing really well. And next KZ is just not doing as hot as they should be. They're just seemingly not here with their heads. And if they are here with their heads, well. The next KZ is going to try to take their heads. Lasso doesn't really do anything good though. Catches out the Lich, but he is still just fine. Still has his ultimate. In comes the hookshot equal. Are you sure you want to do that? Wrecking of Souls get thrown out. That was a bit of a... Um, overreaction. You never, of course, know how many people are around there. But with the Wrecking of Souls coming out. As well as the, B as the first 10 second BKB charge. You kind of would have hoped that his team would have committed more. Then again, they don't really have any disables apart from Impales, and if that's on cooldown, then you can't really wish for anything, then you can't really do anything, you have to just wait. Wait until they come running your way or slowing people down and chase them, and if you're so close past the tier 2 tower, so close to the base, you can't really chase anything. So they're doing the right thing right now. Just trying to take out the outer towers, tier 1 top, Dyer's tier 1 top bottom, tower. and mid are already down. This is the last year one still standing on the side of next KZ. Radiance middle tower is under attack. Dyer's structures are fortified. Maybe next KZ can get something Dyer's in return for it. I mean, Doom attack. has his BKB ready. Apparently, screw Shadowblade. BKB is the way is to go. Born. I mean, there's a lot that you can stop with that BKB, of course, from OSG. That's true.
Dyer's Almost think that the Alexa in his inventory attack. is a teleport scroll. But then again, he's not the only one of his team. Radiant's Ooh, bottom tower dagger. is under attack. For a quick stab of the dark. It makes you wonder. If what a fucker jumps on, on one now. If he jumps on the other Titan, Elder Titan is tanky enough to live. If he jumps on Nyx Assassin, he'll spike Carapace and you'll have to wait for your lasso to go off and then fly away with him. And in that time that might already be too late, Noah's you might already have some back off coming in. If you jump on the Shadow Fiend, he is going to be tanky enough to survive. Afterwards, he'll pop his BKB and either TP out or wreck him of souls and kill you off. Lich and Pugna are basically the only targets. And then is Pugna not even a real good target because he can potentially decryptify himself. So it's really difficult for the Bat Rider to now get a, get a gank going. So I think they just uh, just start try to uh, try to team fight, which is something that they're gonna get focused in right now, actually. Radiance top tower is under attack. Radiance structures Forced are into. fortified. Reeves already coming out with his medallion. They do go back. Well, they're Radiance scared off easily. Just fallen. to support alchemists with chemical rage burning, running in is enough to uh, to scare everybody if I was the away apparently. Feel like they could have pressured that and taken it, but they're right to be careful. They are very right to be careful. Oh, they do go in though. They try to catch out the lich. These fucking cards will go down. The doom up on Wicked Zig. This is OSG on the wrong side. The half of the team backed off, and the rest just stick stuck around. The two supports picked up. Big num. Still in this. Still alive. Wasn't able to get a range to use his mechanism, he's still running for it. In comes Wadafaka, he still has his lasso. We'll grab Big Nam, this should be a kill. They have taken down the ward, he's gonna try to run and hide. The mechanism will come out, Alchemist doesn't have the vision. He's wind up setting himself, but it doesn't matter. Crystal Main with a blast, and with the kill. Next, next KZ, they just got that handed to them, because everybody of OSG was backing off. And then why did Lich and Nyx come back? By Carapace, Reeves. Might be in some trouble. We'll get picked off. Lich will take it. Lich indeed. Back in the mix. As the rest of Next KZ now back themselves off. They weren't able to take the tower. Good quick responses coming out from Next K from OSG. But still, I mean, this was was not a fight that I think that OSG should have taken. So they give Next KZ a little bit, they only lose a support alchemist for, for it, so Next KZ is going to be very happy with the results. Especially for the extra gold that they're getting. Now Face Woods up on the alchemist, I said I just said support alchemist, but I feel like they want to rotate this into a bit more aggressive alchemist. Reeves already w running around in his uh, chemical rage. Show me going for the mechanism by the looks of it. Unless he wants to really get a Skade, which would I would find interesting. I wouldn't even be opposed to it. But I'm not really gonna expect Dyer's it. Top Ooh, four staff forward. Attack. He wanted to see if he can get a go on, uh, on Reeves. Reeves, who already had his chemical rage felt. A lot of drunks coming out from the minimap. From both Dyer's sides. Top tower is under attack. And this time OSG is not backing up. We have a pause. This could very well be a tactical pause. A door. Well, I, I think, like, even if it's a technical pause, then it's good for both. Because it will allow NextKZ to discuss this situation. They have got a bad rider already flying a bit uh, below the radar. And what the fuck? Are, he wants to jump in, he wants to grab someone, and he's gonna grab Chomi. The Doom comes out for him as well, so no BKB for Chomi. They could be able to kill him off. Yes, they are. Earth Splitter coming through, though, and it is OSG that tries to take something in return, but they're backed off. They're forced out. Mantis will take another kill. Wicked Six still around here in his vendetta. They're not gonna find him, but they will find Big Nam. They should be able to take him down, unless Big Nam. Is there gonna be a three minute pale? Are you still able to. Oh, that was. I don't think that was worth it, but it is still a nice kill. It's a support for a bat rider which overall in theory is a good trade but everybody of next kz got some experience and gold from that and right now that is not something that you can give away this is a team wipe next kz just was able to team wipe osg because osg was too greedy 
stuck around for too long. And next KZ just able to profit from it. Just played their game. Very standard game with a bad rider coming in from the jungle, grabbing someone and then starting the fight. The Doom, of course, on the Shadow Fiend didn't allow him to do anything that fight. No BKB, no Requiem of Souls. No big comeback for OSG this time. But then this is next KZ being completely back in the fight. The gold graph that was already starting to be 7k in favor of OSG is back towards the zero line. Experience graph is actually below the zero line. This is just very troublesome for OSG. They need to be able to find some answer to this. They need to be able to get some edge. Get some ganks going. Impale misses. Wicked sick. Already put up the spike carapace just in case a level death game from Mantis. But next KZ, they won't want to fight for now. They'll want to wait until that Doom is back up again. Until they have got all their mana, all their spells again. And have, of course, that perfect initiation where they can Doom up the Shadow Fiend so that he is no longer a threat. Doom is actually highest on that worth, and I just want to point out, I mean, with that change on the ma on the Midas, I have not seen it picked up just yet, or at least. Yeah, I don't, don't think I have. Hasn't been pointed out to me, at least, by casters. That much. Shadowfiend still also doing really nice on the net worth though, but being surpassed by Mantis, uh, it's not unusual because, of course, there is a Devourer. But Shadowfeet overall is a hero that can farm real fast with his raises. So it's still a very good achievement for NextKZ to have that. And on top of that, if you at least got someone that can go toe to toe with the Shadow Fiend, you're maybe not required to doom him every single time. Oh, middle lane, lasso, wicked sick, in some trouble. Frostbite comes out as well. The Spike Carapace still hits up on both, but it might not be enough. What a fucker. Oh, wow, that's an awkward impale. And a punch coming out from equal. Death in a can. With the hammer. Taking him down. Here. Looks like next KZ with five heroes around the middle lane. We're really looking to make something happen. I don't think they should though, and, and apparently don't they don't think they should either because part of them are already backing off. So where's the bottom lane? That's where Mantis is farming again. He is going for his assault grass. Helping out his entire team with that. He is actually almost ready. What a fucker with his double damage rune about to run out and his haste rune of course as well still in his bottle. And with his blink dagger on board he can feel a lot more safe especially since he's also finished up his four staff after previous fight again again they just got a lot of uh, a lot of gold from that fight and we see that it, it leaves its marks on OSG I mean they haven't been able or they haven't even tried to do anything since that bottle lane fiasco they haven't tried to push they're just trying to farm their heroes up, realizing if we lose one more fight, we're gonna actually be at a disadvantage rather than be at an advantage or even even. I would say the next one... Um, or the next one. I would say that someone would... Or should take Roshan. And it's probably gonna be both, like, both teams can actually do it, of course, because one has a Necro, or Necro Mastery, or Presence of the Dark Lord, I should say, and the other one has a Medallion of, of, of Courage, and the Alchemist. And this Alchemist, he is actually only 990 gold away from having his Shadow Blade ready. And that's gonna put him in a way more aggressive position than he started out to be. I mean, he is still fourth highest on that worth, don't get me wrong. And I mean, fourth highest for his team. Because if he was 4th highest overall, he would actually be doing really well on this map. But, no, 4th highest for his team. So he's not even that farm. It's just that he has very targeted farm. It's only Shadow Boots and a Magic Stick and a Medallion. Nothing else. No other clutter coming out here. And with a Shadow Blade on the Alchemist, I already mentioned that it would start to rotate to... Or start to rotate it more into something of a semi carry than anything else. But he truly is a semi carry right now, as we have a smoke up for OSG. 
Looking to attacking. make something happen. Looking to try and take someone's life. Preferably on the Doom. If they can find him. Which, well, if they do find him, that would be great for them. But there's also a smoke up for NexKZ. Great minds think alike. So no surprise that we are going to see a smoke coming out from NexKZ as well. Because they didn't want to do the Mexican standoff thing. We did have a drawing on the minimap coming out from OSG though. That they were expecting NexKZ to be on the side of the force. Oh... Lich comes out first, the lasso! Jomi does get his BKB on, he still gets put in a lasso! Can they take him down in time? The Requiem of Souls, if he gets it up right here! No, never mind. Still doomed up. They still should be able to take him down. There he goes. Lich also dropped Crystal Maiden will die with them though. It's one for two. With Big Nam getting stunned up. His ward not able to do whatever it needs to be, it needs to be done. It's three for one. The Crystal Maiden dies for the th for two of the cores of OSG and one strong offlaner there as well and with that the tier 1 tower middle will be going down on the side of OSG and that makes the towers even and better yet if NextKZ wasn't already ahead after previous fight they will be now NextKZ is just making a comeback and it feels like OSG is allowing them to I mean really allowing them to it should not be possible Ah, it should. It's Dota. Everything is possible in Dota. Roshan, though, attempted. Of course, OSG is back alive again, so perhaps they're gonna try and contest it. They realize that it's happening. The te teleports are there, and next is he actually backing off. I figured perhaps they can try to take the Roshan and hope that it is down before the other team arrives, but they don't want to risk it. There's a central word of the high ground, by the way. Nicely done. This one is not going to be one that they can find on top of that. Oh, wow. Are they really going to try and do this? They are. With the presence of the Dark Lord, they can. Flame Break comes out. Next KZ, are you going to really let this happen? Now the teleport comes in from the Clockwork, but they're not going to be in time. Blink in from Wadafaka. He drags out Big Nam, but he's not going to be the one to want to pick the Aegis up. Big Nam will drop, for sure. But in comes the rest, and Chomi is the one that picked up the Aegis. He doesn't have BKB though, and if they pick him up now, they will no longer have to deal with that Aegis. The cards come out, he doesn't block anybody in though, and equal, he might have just signed his own death warrant because of that, still alive. And it is the Aegis indeed that goes down. Nyx Assassin decides to uh, back off, and that's gonna be Chomi dead for realsies this time at 3 0 next KZ. They might not get the Aegis, but they get a big team fight off the back of it and get the Aegis down on the side of OSG. Making sure that all that gold that it just earned is uh, removed again, or at least on three of them. Alchemist. I'm intrigued by this Alchemist. He is just such a such a support alchemist at the start, but if you look at his inventory now, I mean he's he's got himself the start of the heart. I'm gonna assume that's a heart. Oh, where are you gonna go? Blinking lasso. That's gonna be big now. Whoa, where did my camera go to? Big now will get picked up. The stun actually hits up on the Lich. Lich is still throwing out his ulti, but it's already interrupted. Wicked six, nice by Carapace, stunning up a lot of people on XKZ. He doesn't die, not even with the level that death coming out from Mantis, but his tower does die. And actually Alchemist, he's already walking up the hill, just needs a target to throw his stun up to. He doesn't find anybody though, it's night time, so unless a vision. He's forced out into safety, so we'll be fine. Radiant's middle tower is under attack. Sorry for that sound. Hopefully it doesn't make too many people thirsty. Radiant's middle tower has fallen. Oh, that was another tier two dropped. Thanks. There's only one tier two left standing on the side of OSG, and OSG, the lead that they had early on, it's a shame they couldn't capitalize on it. They were doing so well. They had that bed rider shut down. They had the doom that didn't have as much farm as you could have because there was a lich around there. But then they stayed around too long bottom. They should have just kept next KZ moving, not allowed them to get into position for a big five on five team fight. Not with the Batrider on your on your opponent's side. Batrider is just one of those heroes that can completely throw you off guard and well get you killed, basically.
Though that Doom is doing the works too. Doom is making sure that Chomi is having a very bad time. Especially if you can get a Doom off before that black for before that BKB. That's just insane. And even if you don't, there's still gonna be a lasso to follow it up. The right click damage coming off from the Doom is actually quite significant. I'm gonna assume that at some point he'll find a wolf and go for it, but for now he is full with uh, <laughs> with centaurs. <laughs> Surprisingly. Let's see if there's a wolf somewhere in the jungle. Did I see the camps? Oh, I thought I did. Did I see some of the camps? See? There they are. Wow, I really, for a second there, I, d I couldn't see camps. How weird is that? Whoa, Bat Rider, what are you doing? Yeah, this is not unlogical at all. Nyx Assassin, however, is the one that dies on the other side of the map. Or other side of the map. I shouldn't say that. It was still uh, around here. Both went for the rune, I guess. Nope. It wasn't even there. Rune is bottom. Nice pickup for equal, though. Solo kill. And everybody is OSG. I mean, they're just trying to farm. And I haven't really seen... Like, there was a Pugna on the safe lane, right? And he's got a mechanism and a Necronomicon, which is great. But it's not enough right now. It's just not enough. Not for a safe lane, Kunka. Or Kunka. Pugna, at least. I don't know where I get those words from. Plans up and BK. Uh, he did not go for um, a soul crash. I really did th thought that he was gonna go, but no. He went for Vanguard, or he? I thought he was gonna go for Heart. That is, but he went for Vanguard. I, I kind of like it though, because he is, of course. I mean, he started out as a support alchemist, so he wasn't gonna have that much farm. Oh, we just dig. You're dragged, and I think you're dead as well. The flame break comes out. Force up to the low ground. It's gonna maybe let him live. In comes the level death, the Shiva's guard is not going to reach him anymore, the mechanism comes out, saves him as well. Alchemist though, still running in, has got his stun up, will throw it out in an illusion before backing off to the last side of the tower, standing on the side of OSG. That will be all tier 2 towers dropped, while all tier 2s on the side of next KZ are still standing. I can't believe that OSG wasn't able to get more out of their early game. It's just such a shame they were doing they were starting off doing so well, but right now next KZ has just completely surpassed them. 15k gold in favor of next KZ. Over 15k experience in favor of next KZ. And they've got themselves a Pugna, a Shadow Fiend, an Elder Titan, even a Nyx Assassin. All need that farm. Lich a bit less so, but all need that farm. And they're not getting it. And even if they did, they have to share it. They are sharing the experience right now. In comes the Alchemist. As it's prey already down, he has to be careful though. Getting Spike Carapace and he will die. Lich Oldman bouncing around still. Mantis and Wadafaka. Mantis doesn't care because he's got his BKB turned on. But Wadafaka does care. He's already backed off. One for one. One for two so far. Well, Mantis is still looking for some targets. Doesn't really find them though. Can, can find Big Num. Should be able to find Big Num. If someone just does the damage... No, it's not there. Level death comes out. Punch. One more punch. Should do the job. You're dead. There's going to be a triple kill for Mantis. And it is going to be quite a few heroes left alive here for next KZ. Just a clockwork. Or Bat Rider, rather, has teleported back to uh, to base. The clockwork is actually very low. He will teleport out to base as well. I don't blame him for that. So they were able to win the fight in the end, but they don't get anything off the back of it. No tier 3 towers. As clockwork now picks up the second Dagon in the game because already... Who did already have a, a Dagon? Someone picked up a Dagon. It was the Alk. I really thought someone else picked up a Dagon. Was this a Deja Vu? That was a Deja Vu. That's weird. Lasso Tron. You're dead. One more hit or the fire. The fire will do it. And indeed, only one Dagon. I don't know why I thought there would be more. But Equa has a Dagon. I like the warning coming out from next KZ. Look at this. Well, one just disappeared. That's a shame because it was a fun one. Well, around there. There's one right here, of course. This is uh, just, just new. 
making sure like this ward sees he's everything like this edge here so if you walk past here you'll see it you'll see every every pa every pass you'll see this pass this pass this pass and of course this so there this ward is is one of the better ones out there i really like that one and then you've also got right there blocking out that intersection and a ward to see if, if there's people coming in from the side so i really like the wards coming out from next to the kz very defense or very aggressive though um which is good for them not so good for osg they are really not able to walk into the jungle without next kz knowing it and they'll either try to kill you off for it or they'll know that you're not there and you're not going to be there in time before an XKZ can make something happen. Blink last so Spike Carapus is there straight away with the four star five. What the fuck? And we'll get bursted down though with the mana burn to come out from Wicked Tick. And he was by himself. That was a bit of a lone wolf kind of job thing. And that was not worth it because he just died, didn't get anything in return. And that was just pure greed. That's another Dagon picked up. This one is on the side of OSG. Nyx Assassin. It's a fairly standard item on the Nyx Assassin. Not one that you normally build when you're behind, though. And if you look at Nyx Casey's lineup, the Bat Rider is actually fairly tanky overall. And, well, I guess you have to hope until he puts on his Mask of Madness, then you can go for it. Shadow Fiend's not gonna die from it. Pugna might be. I mean, the Crepify is gonna amplify your damage for the Dagon. Necronomical level 3. There goes your BKB still for the alchemist. He is looking pretty good to be honest. This was a support alchemist some day far in the, in the past. See, I don't know what that is. That's not Skype. Someone said it was Skype earlier, but no, it's not Skype. It's weird sounds. Weird sounds coming out from this. Anyways, Roshan, not yet up. It's just a couple of seconds. Equal is pretending that he is a ward. I don't blame him. I mean, his team is doing really well. He's got his mechanism, his four staff, and his Dagon. I guess, you know, he's done. <laughs> Might be wanting to have a blade meal at some point. But for now, he's not really needed. So he'll just wait until Roshan is up, and he will be up in a second. And his entire team was already there. Since it was close to three minutes anyway, and they knew it had to spawn any any moment, so. Doom will take the Aegis. Doom, the hero that hasn't died yet, the only hero in the game that hasn't died yet, he wants to keep it that way. I don't blame him for that, but I... You know, if, if he hasn't died yet, what makes you think that he's gonna die now? And why would you not put the Aegis on someone that will die? Like... Like a bear rider. I don't normally like putting Aegis on bear rider because if things go okay-ish, then he should be able to at least get his lasso off before he dies. And if he does that, then he's done all he's needed. But apparently they don't. They also don't give it to the alchemist. Alchemist, who in terms of levels, is actually sitting uh, second highest. Shared third place, as you can see. I shared to second place with four others, uh, three others, as you can see. There's a big difference between OSG's uh, levels and the levels of Next KZ, though. This is kind of scary. They might be able to take a tier 2, but the fortification comes out, and Next KZ is gonna force them to the bottom lane. What a fuck, I who have his lasso again. He has got his boots to travel. Blink is forced. It's Yasha. He's mighty fast. He drags Wicked Sick in and comes a stun. That's already one dead. The fight would be 4 on 5 right now if OSG decides to go in. BKB is turned on by any everybody. Hookshot comes in from equal as well, but he'll get forced out or he'll walk out. Nice little children, but there's a lot of creeps around. They only get the Aegis thus far, as we do see that the Shadow Fiend goes down, the Pugna goes down, Tron last one alive. A lot of buybacks happening. Is it gonna be enough? Show me. Can he make something happen? He still has a Requiem of Souls. He's looking for Mantis. The Earth Mother will not heal hit anybody, even though Equal was so close to dying. What a fucker still in this. Doesn't have his last suit yet, but how 
We will have it again in just a couple of seconds as Mantis turns on his BKB. Again, looks for Chomi, decides to go on Weejah Zig first and he'll die first. Chomi himself, they're not gonna die if that one. They will take down the next assassin and that means that we're gonna have another four dead on the side of OSG with a lot of buybacks already used. And this should actually be GG next KZ. Coming back strong after OSG giving them the space they needed to come back from this. They had not a good early game. Apart from maybe the Doom. But after that fight bottom, that was the turning point. Where next KZ got hit themselves a team wipe. And they'll take the victory. They will continue to be number one here at Starlight or Star Series. Now, of course, this is day 14. There are in total three games today. As mentioned earlier, though, there is a break. In between this game and the next one. The next one will be Flipside. We'll actually see two games of Flipside. Russia will first see one against Sigma International and afterwards we'll see one against Mouse Sports. So we're gonna see those two. The first one is gonna start at 8 p.m. Now I'm gonna at least eat but I might be playing uh, some uh, Wraith Knight or something with uh, with some subs if they want to. And um, yeah that's uh, that's about it. So um, I'll be back. You'll be back hopefully. Should be back. Oh, and if you want to watch something right now, I believe actually it doesn't start until two hours from now as well. So, never mind. Never mind. You're not going anywhere. So, um, any regardless, I'll be right back to say the same thing again, but then uh, with the uh, Christmas uh, cheer on. So, you know, be right back.